entered the waking dream space. The wind moved like sashaying hips, and her tree curved arms accentuated her waist. She is more than an ancestor. She is an ancient wisdom keeper, the mother of deep southern roots. She introduced herself as Gawana, and this is her story. 180 million years ago, hear me, see me, understand me, deep southern roots. Before I start, make sure you ground yourself and stay present. It's easier to go back in time if you imagine you're watching it on TV. Picture the richness of Africa, the sassiness of South America, the diversity of Madagascar, the place you call the land down under, Australia, and Antarctica, all connected. All of the land spaces, one supercontinent, with tropical lush rainforests, segmented worms, round creatures that look like jellyfish, and a warm climate. I know you're wondering what happened. What caused this separation? Well, we were already separated from Laurasia, the northern part of Pangaea. See, Pangaea was the supercontinent that existed over 250 million years ago. Laurasia was in the north and I was in the south. You see, the south was colorful and had a flavor like your gumbo. Unlike the north, which wanted to disconnect, we were different, but we were also fun and enjoyed being together. Eventually, Laurasia separated from us, drifted north, and gradually split into Europe, North America, and Asia. So why did we split? The earth was grieving, changing. The core was finding herself, and as a result, we began to move. You all know about tectonic plates, what lies beyond the core and causes a shift. Well, they wanted their independence, separation, but we wanted community. However, Africa and South America were the first to go. They had their plans to do their own thing, but when they did split, they created the South Atlantic Ocean with so many new and beautiful creatures. We understood and forgave them. The other continents stayed for a while. They hung out. They vowed to be there for each other. But eventually, India, Madagascar went forth. And that left Australia and Antarctica. I know it may be hard to understand, but Antarctica was more like Australia than what you know of her today. Antarctica, you rarely talk about her. A frozen piece of ice, but back then she was life. She was warm like your southern climates. She too was made of lush rainforest. She and Australia were the best of friends. They stayed together for as long as they could. Even after Africa, South America, India, and Madagascar had split and moved on. Yet, the inevitable happened. Australia decided it was time to leave. Can you imagine being part of a community for so long and then suddenly being alone? As Australia shifted northward, catching up with India and gained independence, Antarctica felt sad and lonely. Where did the ice come from on this earth? There's always two sides to every story. No one considers that the shadow of the fire is ice, the coldness of what they call snow. The evidence of the snowball earth still remains in Antarctica. But I will let her tell her own story. Antarctica enters. I can
can feel her sadness. She speaks. I am frozen. No one comes to see me. I am not visited as much as Australia. I am the distant cousin, the cold part of the family. But they say time is shifting. There will be a time when we will all come back together and I will be back with Australia and with my family. The question is, how much has everyone changed? Will we recognize each other? I long for those lush rainforests and milder, warmer temperatures. I long for the time when there was no ice and we were all side by side and that we gave to each other. We were the rainbow tribe. We were the heart, sacral, solar plexus, and purification chakras of the earth. We were Gondwana. We were deep southern roots. Gondwana, deep southern roots, please know your power and don't let anyone tell you what you're not capable of doing.